In this video, we cover how to apply a basic controller for a DC-DC converter. Specifically, we will be applying proportional integral derivative, PID, control to a buck converter. But all of the steps we take in this process are general. All you need is a transfer function for your DC-DC converter and controller. From the feedback control diagram, we can see that the input to the controller is the error, E of S, and the output is the input to the DC-DC converter, U of S, which is the duty ratio. Since PID is a standard control, let's start with that. With PID control, we have a proportional term, an integral term, and a derivative term. Here is a transfer function in standard form. Here is the transfer function for the closed loop system of a buck converter. Now we apply the transfer function for the PID controller. We do this by simply substituting our function here into our closed loop transfer function. So let's do this step by step. First, we simply write it out. It will be a little bit long, but let's just write everything out. So here we substitute in our equation, kds squared plus k p s plus k i. Oops. There we go. All of this is over s. And then we do the same to the denominator. s squared plus 1 over r c s 1 over l c plus v i over l c and now we substitute in our PID controller equation k d s squared k p s plus k So we have a lot of terms here, but first we're going to simplify by multiplying by s over s. So let's simplify our system here. And in the numerator, we're going to get vi over lc multiplied by all of our terms here. So we have kd first, s squared. Then we have the same term, vi over lc kp s and then vi over lc ki. So there's our numerator term. So now let's go to the denominator. First, when we multiply this s through, we're going to cancel out the denominator here and then multiply s to the, our remaining terms. So first we start with s cubed. That's by itself. Then we move to s squared, so we'll gather the correct terms together. 1 over r c plus v i over l c k d. And this is all multiplied by s squared. Okay, now we multiply the terms for just s. So we're going to have 1 over l c plus vi over l c k p multiplied by s. And then our last term is going to be vi over l c multiplied by k i. So here's our little bit long equation here, but this is our transfer function y over y ref, and we see it's a third order equation here, so we know we'll have three poles in our system. Here is the PID controlled buck converter transfer function. There are lots of terms here, but remember that R, L, C, and V, I are inherent properties to our system, so they cannot be changed in the controller design. However, the control co coefficients, Kp, Ki, and Kd, 
can be changed to obtain the desired performance characteristics. Our first priority for performance is always stability. If our system is not stable, the other characteristics do not matter. After we ensure the system is stable, we can optimize the polls for things like rise time, overshoot, or settling time. To check stability and control the performance characteristics, we need to check the closed looped polls. So, we see that there are three polls. Through choosing KD, KP, and KI, we can fully choose the coefficients in the denominator and fully determine the locations of the poles. Thus, if we correctly choose our controller values, we can make the system stable and achieve our target performance characteristics. Let's say we pick these example values for the buck converter values and these values for the controller coefficients. Our integral control coefficient here is larger than the others, and the derivative control coefficient is relatively small. If we plug in these values, to get the, we get this transfer function. When we plot the poles of our closed-loop system, we get this plot in the s-plane. We have one pole on the real axis and two complementary poles with imaginary components. Since all the poles are in the left half plane, we know the system is stable. Here, we can also see the step response of our system. You can see that the system responds very quickly, within five milliseconds, due to this pole. However, we also have some overshoot. Let's see what happens when we change the control values. To change our system characteristics, we pick new control values that change changes our denominator coefficients in the transfer function. We have decreased all of our control value coefficients. Here you can see the pole locations have changed. Now the pole on the real axis is very close to zero, but it is still in the left half plane, so we know our system is stable. And we can see in the resulting effect in the step function. The time scale here is much longer than the previous example. The system reacts more slowly, settling in about five seconds, but there's no overshoot. From these examples, you can see how much the control values change the way the system reacts. So you need to pick your control ver values very carefully. In this video, we have shown how to apply a PID controller as feedback for a buck converter to keep the output voltage at five volts. The control variables should be chosen to ensure the system is stable and the target performing characteristics are met. Note that the buck converter system is a very good system to work with and easily achieve stability and the target characteristics. Other DC-DC converters may not be so easily controlled. You can use the same steps we covered in these videos to apply various controllers to other DC-DC converters. I hope these videos have helped you understand how to develop controller for DC-DC converters. Now you can try it yourself.